In today's video, we're testing not one, not two, but six different flexible 3D printing filaments you can use on your 3D printer. We're gonna compare them to each other and do a filament shootout. Let's get started. Welcome back to Maker's Muse, guys. So printing with flexible filaments can be extremely handy sometimes when you want a 3D print that has some give to it. You might want it to be able to bend, flex, stretch. But if you've been 3D printing for a while, you'll know that there's tons of different variations of flexible filaments on the market, and some of them work differently to others. Actually, all of them work differently to each other, even propose same types of filaments between different manufacturers. So what I have in front of me are six different types of flexible filaments across a range of manufacturers and a range of price points. And what I've been doing is testing them out by printing these octopuses, octo, octopies. Uh, <laughs> these are these octopi are basically the thicker legged octopi on Thingiverse, and you can print them and download them. Put a link in the description, and it's a great test file for printing flexible filaments. So if you've never printed with flexible filaments before, I can recommend my uh, video on. 3D printing 101 with flexible filaments using Simplify 3D. Now you don't have to use Simplify 3D, you can just go through that video and change things in your own slicer of choice. The things should be fairly transferable. So to test the filaments, I use two different machines. I use the Wanhao i3, which is my original Cocoon Create version of it, it's a rebrand with the Flexion extruder. Now the Flexion extruder is specifically designed to print flexible filaments well. And this is important, if you wanna be printing flexible filaments a lot, you might wanna move to customized hardware to give you the best chance of success. However, I didn't want to limit the testing to just printing on a specialized extruder. So I also went to see if they would print on the standard Prusa Mark II, Prusa i3 Mark II with no modifications at all, which will give you a good idea if you can run the, the filament that I'm testing. Enough talking, let's get into the range. So let's start with Polyflex from Polymaker. So this is one of the oldest flexible filaments you can buy. Uh, it's produced by Polymaker. In, um, I've used this box for other things. <laughs> Produced by Polymaker in China, and basically they have a very, very nice approach to quality. Boxes are nice, filament spools are nice, and this is basically a flexible filament that prints quite easily. So it's flexible, but it is not elastic, and this is important. Some of these filaments you'll find are flexible but not elastic, and some of them are elastic as well, which will definitely influence your purchasing decision if you want something to stretch or you just want something to flex. So Polyflex printed quite well at 220 degrees C using my default Wanhao i3 Flexion profile in Simplify 3D. And this is the result. So the octopus has fantastic detail apart from one area of missed extrusion. I'm not sure what caused that. It has a small amount of stringing. Now I have told Simplify 3D to run within the part for during rapids. So there's not as much stringing as you would expect. Uh, flexible filaments do usually string quite a bit. Keep that in mind. But what I've noticed is it's not actually that flexible once you print a solid part. Like, that's quite hard. Um, the legs are flexible when they get quite thin, but they're definitely not elastic. So I would class uh, Polyflex as a semi-flex material. You want something to flex a bit and be compliant, but you don't want it to be really squishy and rubbery, and it's definitely not gonna be elastic. So that's probably a good use for Polyflex. I would say it prints quite well and quite nicely with a good finish. And it's probably quite tough as well because I use this in my off-road robot platform as well. And in case you're wondering, yes, it prints perfectly fine on the Prusa i3 Mark II. In fact, it's the filament I used in my testing video. And that's a little cube printed perfectly. No issues at all, no missed extrusion. So you can print Polyflex on your Prusa i3 Mark II and probably any other similar i3 platform or similar design extruder. Alrighty, so up next is this. And I would class this as generic TPU filament. So I purchased this um, years ago actually from Jamie, which is 3D Printer Gear. He's actually in, based in Australia. And this is a phenomenally elastic filament. You can see here how stretchy it is. It's fantastic. So TPU, thermoplastic uh, polyurethane, is a elastic and flexible filament. And you'll get different geometers, which means you'll get different uh, ratios of flexibility on the market. Because this is elastic, printing it can be very challenging. So what I did, is I printed my octopus on the Flexion again, using the same settings, but I did, I did, did print it a little bit hot, hotter, actually. I printed it at 230 degrees C. TPU sometimes likes that, depending on the brand. And the quality was actually, again, fantastic. And I can definitely tell it's a little bit more flexible, or a lot more flexible than the Polyflex, but also it has a bit of stretch to it, a bit of elastic, not too much. 
and which is interesting because it so, feels like such wet noodle on the spool at 1.75. But this is definitely something you want if you want something to be a bit compliant in terms of a bit elastic as well as being flexible. But what about printing generic TPU on a standard 3D printer? Well, to my surprise, it did print on the Pre-Try 3 Mark II. However, the top infill, as it started to move quickly, failed quite a lot. So if you're gonna print this kind of really flexible stuff on something like a Pre-Try 3 Mark II, for a start, be prepared for it to start spewing out the side because flexible filaments will find the path of least resistance, but don't run very fast. Change your infills to very low speeds because it's compressing. It's flexible, it stretches, but it also compresses in the extruder assembly, which means you get a delay, you get a lag between extruding and uh, on the, the actual gear and extruding out the hot end. All right, so that's generic TPU. Next is this one, which gets the award for the wackiest spool in the lineup. So. This filament is from Fiberlogy. I can't say your name right. Fiberology, Fiberlogy. Sorry guys, but these guys are based in Poland and they reached out to me with their specific brand of flexible filament, which they say was easy to print with on almost any, any machine at quite high speeds. And yes, I did specifically ask for pink. So starting the, apart from the, the spool being absolutely funky and the boxes being nice as well, I did notice that it is quite flexible, more, I would say more flexible than the Polyflex filament on the spool. And it's not really uh, elastic. It is a little bit elastic, but um, not, not nearly as much as the generic TPU. So I printed this again using the same, same G code, uh, no issues at all, at 220 degrees C on the Flexion, and this is the result. So again, fantastic finish. Pretty much no stringing, um, less stringing I'd say than the, the TPU and about the same I'd say as a Polyflex. But I would definitely class this as a semi-flex because although the end of the arms are flexible, the rest of the body is actually really rigid. I can't compress it in any direction. It's really tough. It may as well be solid plastic, like a rigid plastic. And again, you know, it's not as, I guess, la it's a little bit dampened compared to the Polyflex but definitely a semi-flex. Don't, don't use this filament for like really flexible applications. But it did print well, and again, as I would expect, it printed beautifully on the Prusa i3 Mark II with no issues. I didn't have to slow it down or anything like that. So if you're looking for a flexible filament, which is slightly elastic, but still kind of a semi-flex without um, too much issues printing, yeah, I can go behind what they claimed. The Fibrology Fiberflex 40D, did actually print really well on both machines. So, well done guys. You uh, lived up to your claims. All right, next filament, Ascentium TPU. So just a disclaimer, this is an early batch and they have reached out to say that there's a new batch on the way. So um, they are trying to fix a few of the issues they've had with some machines. And I, I will say I did actually encounter some of those issues. But in terms of the flexibility, it's not as flexible as the generic TPU, but it is definitely nice and soft. Nice sort of clear color as well, and it is elastic as well. Not as, not as elastic, I would say, but still quite stretchy. And this is the result. So again, this printed out great, no issues on the Flexion, um, and it is actually quite soft. I can crush the, the octopus's head in a lot. No issues in both directions, and the, you know, the legs are flexible and a little bit elastic too. So it worked great on the Flexion, but sadly on the Prusa i3 Mark II, I couldn't get it to extrude, it did jam up. So I couldn't get it to work there. But as I said, this is an early version and they're working on a newer one. And yeah, it printed out quite well, but I did have to use specialized extruder hardware to make this one work. All right, now we're moving into the last two and these last two come on tiny rolls. So you know there's something special. This is Make Shaper TPU. It is 85A sure hardness, which means it's quite soft. Um, how soft you might say? Well, look at that. So as you saw, it's quite elastic, but again, interestingly enough, when you print something that has some form to it, like this octopus, the head is squishy, but I'd say less squishy than this, this one from, from Ascentium. You know, I can crush this head in quite a lot. This one, not so much. It's quite a bit more rigid on the actual main body of the octopus. The legs are nice and flexible. And you know, they got a bit of stretch to them, but again, not a huge amount. So again, even though the filament feels very flexible and uh, elastic, the solid object itself 
is actually quite a bit more stiffer. Although this one does bundle up on itself quite a not quite nicely, which again lends to its elastic nature. And just another thing about getting these prints off your print beds, uh, for the print bite, it had pretty much suctioned itself down. It was really hard to remove. I had to do one leg at a time, then kind of lever it off once it started getting really flexible. And to my surprise, on the Prusa i3, it actually printed, no problems. This actually looks gorgeous. So yeah, the Makeshaper uh, 85A TPU printed good on the on the Prusa i3 Mark II with no mods. Again, using the, the inbuilt Semiflex preset in the Prusa Edition Slicer, no other changes, printed great. So you can print these TPUs on the Prusa if you're careful. Again, keeping your speeds very slow. But something also to be careful is the PEI surface on the Prusa. If you heat it up too much and get the surface too close, you're never gonna remove flexible filaments off it. So be careful of that. Keep your distance a little bit further away than you normally would and you'll be fine. Alrighty, and moving on to the last, but certainly not least filament in the lineup. This is X60 from Diabas Engineering, the guys that make the Flexion. So you gotta think, are you making a, an extruder design for printing flexible materials? You gotta put your money where your mouth is and produce one of the most flexible filaments on the market, which is what they've done. So this stuff is ridiculous, as you can see here. Just look at that. You know, I put some out on the table and it's just, just, just absolutely ridiculously flexible. So they've rated it here at 60A sure hardness. This is 85, 60. That is stupid soft. It's getting to the point of skin softness, actually, in terms of sure hardness. And when I printed this, I wasn't even sure the Flexion would work, to be honest, without some serious tuning, but it did. The print quality is not fantastic. You can start to really see how flexible materials start to under extrude, even on the Flexion system, but look at that. You can hear the air coming out of it. It's absolutely nuts. It's crazy flexible. The arms are even stretchy. <laughs> so if you want something ridiculously flexible, this is the way to go. But uh, unfortunately, although I did get a product to print on the Prusa i3 Mark II, it's full of under extrusion. So maybe if I slowed my print speeds down to like 15 millimeters a second, it might work but do not expect something this flexible to work on stock hardware. You need something to support the filament extrusion path, which is what the Flexion has. So which is, you know, why you can print it and I guess why they developed the filament in the first place. Okay, so final conclusions, I guess let's do some awards. What is the easiest filament in this roundup to print with? Well, I probably would actually say Fibrology. Maybe, maybe in tie, tie with uh, the Polyflex, but the print quality I got off the Prusa is completely comparable to what I got off the Flexion. And I like their spools and I like their color range as well. So as a brand I'd never heard of till I reached out, yeah, well done guys, that's pretty impressive. In terms of the most flexible filament, well, that's gonna be the X60, obviously. This is ridiculously flexible. Um, you can see just how much I can stretch this. It's not damaging the filament at all, it resumes its shape. How they extrude this in factories, I have no clue, but it exists and it's really flexible and you can buy it from their website. And the filament that I'd say probably uh, is the most cost effective in the lineup would be the generic TPU. So that would be something like this, which you can get again in crazy colors. Uh, various companies like Hobby King, you can grab it, grab it straight off eBay. Uh, lots of people make this stuff now. Do not expect similar results across the whole band, but if you've got the patience to print slowly, you probably can get it to work but um, don't expect it to work as easily as normal filament. It's just not going to do it. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this flexible filament roundup. I certainly did enjoy testing these filaments. Um, it took a long time. Again, I've had some of these filaments for more than two years um, and they work great. And I'd certainly enjoyed printing these flexible. That's more like it. Flexible octopeds. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this video guys, hit that subscribe button. It helps us out a huge amount. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Happy printing guys. Bye. Rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit. He has actually blocked in space.